when we came to a golden shrine with doors closed and sealed, we realized that we were in the presence of the dead king. We were to witness a spectacle such as no other man in our times had been privileged to see. On this day, a hundred years ago, the tomb of King Tutankhamun was discovered in 1922 by Howard Carter, and it was called KV-62, King's Valley Tomb Number 62. The discovery caused a worldwide sensation. It was the first time a royal Egyptian tomb was discovered intact, and the world was introduced to the young King Tut. After a long story and a huge dispute, the treasures of King Tut remained in Egypt, and it was transferred to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. But the mummy remained at the tomb until 2007, when it was uncovered to the public for the first time. Around 2018, a gradual transfer of King Tutankhamun's collection began, from the Cairo Egyptian Museum to the Grand Egyptian Museum, or the gym. The process will be completed near the opening of the gym, which will in-house the complete collection of the king. I am Maui, and this is Kimtology. Here are five hidden facts about King Tut you won't believe they are true. In 1996, French archaeologist Alan Zevi and his team discovered the tomb of a woman named Maya. The tomb was found at Saqqara. Maya bears the titles Wit Nurse of the King, Educator of the God's Body, and the Great One of the Harem. She was also depicted with King Tutankhamun's in a unique relief where King Tut is sitting on her lap. In addition to a statue of Maya was found with King Tut as a little boy it was clear that this woman was very close to the king. But the problem is that the records of King Tut's time don't mention Maya. There are no records of her even at the time of King Tut's father, Akhenaten. The only possible explanation is that Maya was a member of the Amarna court of King Akhenaten, who might have changed her name, then choose to be buried at Saqqara, away from Thebes. The leading candidate to be Maya is Princess Merit Aten, the eldest daughter of Akhenaten with Nefertiti, who was also half-sister of King Tutankhamun. The resemblance between the reliefs depicting Merit Aten and Maya is remarkable, in addition to the fact that the international correspondence between Egypt and Asia, which is known as Amarna Letter, mentioned Merit Aten by the name Maya T. Anyway, this connection is not considered yet a piece of conclusive evidence, so we hope that shortly, through more excavation and research, we might reveal more information about the mysterious Maya. In 1895, French archaeologist Victor Lorette discovered a mummy cachet within tomb number 35 at the Valley of the Kings, which belonged to King Amenhotep II. The cachet contained several unidentified mummies. One of them turned out to be Queen T, mother of Akhenaten and grandmother of King Tut, another mummy called the Younger Lady. The mummy was first examined by Lorette, who thought it was of a man. Later, this mummy was examined by Dr. Elliot Smith, who announced it was of a woman. In 2003, archaeologist Joanne Fletcher tried to identify this mummy as Nefertiti. Still, she couldn't provide any evidence for her assumption. But in 2010, after a DNA analysis, results showed that this mummy is of the daughter of King Amenhotep III with Queen T. There was a match between this mummy and King Tut. She was his mother. In other words, this woman was a daughter of King Amenhotep III, Queen T, a sister to Amenhotep IV or Akhenaten, and the mother and the aunt of King Tut. This new evidence ruled out Nefertiti, as she wasn't the daughter of Amenhotep III or T, so it leaves us with one possible candidate, 
a woman named Kea, who was a minor wife of Akhenaten. But the problem is that our information about Kia is maybe nothing beyond her name and the fact that she was an important member of the court and the family of Amarna. Finally, in 2018, a reconstruction was made for this lady. It is commonly known that the tomb of King Tutankhamun was discovered intact. Well, this is not entirely true. The tomb was robbed twice in antiquity. The time of King Tut was a time of unrest, as the country was recovering from the chaos of Amarna period of King Akhenaten, King Tut's father. Shortly after Tut was buried, his tomb was robbed. Records show that the security officials reported the robbery. They repaired the damaged good, sealed the tomb, and filled the outer corridor with limestone chips. But another gang of robbers tried to make their way through the corridor fillings. This attempt was also detected and reported, and eventually the tomb was sealed after being restored once more. After 200 years in the 20th dynasty, during the construction of KV-9, the tomb of King Ramses V and VI, the debris submerged King Tutankhamun's tomb to hide it for centuries, and while the tombs of the valley were plundered one after the other, King Tutankhamun's tomb remained hidden until Carter discovered it in 1922. To unwrap the mummy of King Tut, Carter acquired the service of anatomist Douglas Berry and Saleh Hamdi. On November 11th of 1925, the unwrapping took place in the outer corridor of the tomb of King Seti II, KV-15. Since there was a large concentration of resin within the mummy bandages, the linen got stuck to the mummy and made it so hard to unwrap. So what happened is, they made an incision starting from the edge of the mask to the king's ankles. As layers were removed, the process got worse and almost impossible to follow. The resin and the mummification oils soaked the bandages and made the mummy inseparable from the coffin. They realized the situation as the lower part of the mummy was uncovered. At this point, the team decided the unthinkable. They started cutting the mummy into pieces. They cut the torso in half, they cut the arms, elbows and wrists, and the cherry on top was on November 16th when they used hot knives to separate the head from the golden mask. Later, they reattached the body parts using resin, and Carter never mentioned the dismemberment in his publication or photo documentation. The dismemberment of the mummy was uncovered in 1968 by anatomist Ronald George Harrison, when he extracted the mummy and found out what Carter did. This photo was taken in 1924. It is of an Egyptian boy who was aged around 12 back at the time. The photo shows him wearing a pectoral of King Tutankhamun. His name is Hussein Abdel Rasul, a member of the famous Rasul family. The story behind this picture goes back to 1924. Reports indicate that Hussein used to work as a water boy for Carter's commission. Providing water was a common job for little boys back at the time. While doing his job, some water spilled on the ground to uncover the first step of the tomb, and Hussein went to Carter to inform him of the good news. And you know the rest of the story. The story was never mentioned in Carter's publication, the same as the dismemberment of the mummy, but this photo was taken by the orders of Carter himself. For the rest of his life, Hussein used to hold this photo in front of the Ramesseum temple, he also used to tell tourists his story describing himself as the one who discovered the tomb and also quoted a very famous saying of Carter calling the discovery day as the day of days. After his death, Hussein's children and family kept telling the same story and it attracted a worldwide attention. Eventually, the story somehow made its way into documentaries and news reports. If you like this episode, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it on social media.